Hey everybody, it's your boy John coming at you with a review, this time of a book, not a comic book. So we've got a we've got an actual novel right here. So there's really nothing to look at inside or go through uh, for, for the art or anything like that. I do love the cover. I thought they did a beautiful job here with the Emperor standing over Thrawn. And, uh, and it, it was a, a good cover. So uh, I grabbed this book. Uh, I don't usually go into bookstores and actually grab books, but when Timothy Zahn writes a new Star Wars book, that's about the only reason I will grab a uh, you know general book from a bookstore. I usually get my stuff from Amazon from Indies. But this is a little bit different. I've been reading all of the Star Wars Thrawn series. This is the third book in the current series, which started a couple years ago. And the first one was Thrawn... I don't remember. Ah, let's figure that out. I think it's got it in the back. The first one was Thrawn... Oh, maybe it's not in the back. Maybe it's in the front. Oh, cool. There's a little poster here. All right. Um, the first one was... Here we go. Oh, there's a bunch here. Okay, so the original trilogy was this one, which are probably three of the greatest novels of all time. Star Wars or not, doesn't matter. And uh, then... Oh, cool. All right, thank you very much. Uh, here we go. The first one was just Star Wars Thrawn. All right, here it is right here. Uh, and this was a very good book. It was, it's like an origin story of Thrawn and, uh, very enjoyable. I, I thought this was very fun and actually very close to on par with the original trilogy. The second one was Thrawn Alliances, which was last year. It actually details Anakin Skywalker and, and, uh, and Thrawn working together in the past and then dealing with a current threat. That threat escalates here. It, it's a, it's alien species called the Grisk and the Grisk were introduced in that Thrawn alliances. I don't know if they're anywhere else in the Star Wars universe or in Rebels or anything like that because I don't pay attention to that stuff. I only pay attention to these books by Timothy Zahn. And so uh, they, the threat grows in this one. There's a uh, threat to Project Stardust, which is the Death Star. If you guys remember uh, how Stardust was, I, I believe, named in, uh, what, was, what was that film? Rogue One. Eminently for forgettable film. Um, and Thrawn is brought in to deal with that threat. Basically, there's some Minoc type of things that are attaching themselves to ships' holes and uh, causing ships uh, to get damaged and disappeared and things like that. And uh, Thrawn wants a TIE Defender project funded from the Empire, and some other admiral wants uh, his Stardust project to receive more funding. And so uh, they come in and they, they have a wager, and basically Sh Thrawn uh, has to deal with this uh, for within a week or something like that. And uh, if he doesn't, he loses his funding. Uh, if he does, then the other guy loses his funding to Thrawn and they all agree on it. Uh, kind of a silly premise. Um, and uh, while, while it was fun, it kind of just felt like an episode, if, if, if that makes sense. Rather than like something epic, like, like the, the first Thrawn novel here like, was this like big epic thing about, uh, about Thrawn, you know, gaining his admiralty and, and dealing with like big imperial threats. And, uh, and then this one, you know, like really had the Thrawn in invader dynamic pretty good. And while of course the original trilogy of Thrawn books had, you know, a, a, a full galaxy sweeping epic to it, just like the original Star Wars movies, this just felt like an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, where it's like Thrawn's the captain of the starship rather than uh, rather than Picard or something. And, and you've got the crew that's been established in these prior books. And, uh, you know, you, he's going through and uncovering a mystery. They go through and they, they, they find some Chiss ships, which is Thrawn's species. And, uh, you know, they end up wanting to fight the Grisks. And it turns out there's a conspiracy uh, within the empire for somebody to make some profit by by uh by stealing some of the uh laser turrets or whatever for the death star and Thrawn has to fight those both and so it just felt like a, a minor episode like it didn't matter and i was told this ha this fit between two episodes of rebels like uh apparently there there was an episode of rebels that had Thrawn and then another episode of, of rebels which had Thrawn. And so this was just meant to fit between them, and perhaps that is why it felt like just like a minor cartoon episode or something like that. But it really just did not have the impact or scale of the other books. Now, Zahn's writing is great as ever. 
he just takes you scene to scene to scene, keeps it going, and he's uh, you know he's a very efficient writer who I very much enjoy. Like I said, I mean, I, I, I keep buying, I don't like Star Wars at this point, really, but I keep buying and reading these Star Wars books because Timothy Zahn's such a good writer that I'll just read his books. It doesn't matter to me. Um, now, uh, there wasn't much tension in this book either. I feel like the other two, because there were threats to other people who mattered in the books and different characters in these books, uh, there, there was some tension to them that, that made them uh, more gripping reads. This one, it's like you just kind of knew Thrawn was going to win the whole time. And uh, because of that, you know, it, it got to the final battle scenes where they just overly described things. And it, it you know, it took 100 pages where it maybe could have taken 20. And it's just like Thrawn's tactics were here. And Thrawn understood this to begin. And he really was planning this three steps ahead the whole time. And he knew they were going to react this way. So we already reacted this way. So there was absolutely zero tension in the final battles where, um, you know, you just knew he was going to win. You knew his crew was going to win. You knew that uh, the Empire was going to win and get back on track. And then you knew it was going to get back into uh, the spot where they're just going to make the Death Star and do the thing. And I guess the way it really ties in is it ends with like Darth Vader being assigned to the Death Star. So that's that's how it like ties into the original Star Wars novel and, and adds that like member Barry's tie to it, right? So that you all feel like you, you care about what happens because Darth Vader, I, I know that name. Um, and that, that's it. So it ended up being pretty cheesy. Um, there wasn't much tension to it. I still enjoyed the book. I mean, it, you know, it's like I said, uh, Zahn's writing's pretty decent overall. Um, and so like I could just go through the book and read it and no problem. Uh, you know, you could skim through a lot of it because like I said, uh, you, you there's no tension in those battle scenes or anything like that. Um, I think the best parts were probably, uh, when, um, Let's see. I just the Chiss ascendancy stuff, where where they're dealing with the, the the children pilots and all that, and, and learning about the the Chiss abilities and their their things like that. That's actually pretty interesting, and uh, I'd like to see a little bit more of that. Uh, the least interesting parts were uh, probably where they sent uh, you know a, a little force down to a planet to investigate things and like you know kind of it it, it felt like they just intentionally broke off the plot. Uh, to be a little bit longer so that they're, you know, just to, to pad the book a little bit to be a, a, a standard uh, trad pub book size. And so that, that plot kind of meandered a little bit. Uh, I didn't really care about uh, director Ronan or whatever. And, uh, you know, Eli Vanto is a pretty cool character. Um, but, you know, I, again, it's just somebody who's in these books who's like, who's not Thrawn. Um, I did like the uh, development of, uh, of uh, Commodore Faro. Uh, she's the uh, first officer to Thrawn throughout these books so far, and they promoted her to uh, to commander of the uh, the Eleventh Fleet or whatever. That was pretty fun. Um, let's see, what else am I missing in this? I don't have a ton to say about it because, like I said, it just felt like an episode uh, of a of an of an episodic TV series. Like this could have just been a Rebels episode without any Rebels in it. Um, I felt every time they mentioned uh, the character Ezra, it just felt forced, like they were trying to. Uh, tie this into the TV show so you could be like member of the TV show member member um, and you know because of the other uh, Thrawn books which you know they used to have this like epic like future history of Star Wars that takes place after all of uh, all of the uh, the movies and now they and now they have this like this is the new canon whereas that stuff doesn't matter anymore um, you know, it just reminds me that they erased that canon whenever I see that, and it reminds me that this is the new canon with all this other garbage in here, like Aftermath by Chuck Wendy and you know, all that. So it makes me sad when I see that stuff, and I actually don't want the tie-ins to Rebels. I'd, ra I'd rather, like, just Thrawn do his own thing and Zahn do his own thing and just be able to just, like, go. Um, so it's probably mired by that continuity. It's probably mired by the fact that... Uh, Disney has a tight control over things and he has to like, you know, get his outlines approved and all that by them now. Um, that's a bummer. Uh, but like I said, the writing's pretty solid. Uh, it was worth the read. It uh, you know, never really bogged down too much. And so I found it pretty enjoyable uh, overall. And um, yeah, I'd give this probably like a six or seven out of 10. I'll give it a seven out of 10 because I'll call seven average. Um, and uh, you know, if you like Star Wars, if you're a continuity freak over Star Wars, you'll probably enjoy this. Uh, if you like Timothy Zahn's writing, you'll probably enjoy this. Uh, but don't expect any, like, grand uh, book. It definitely suffers from prequel syndrome on that level. So I hope you enjoy. 
and I will see you guys soon with another review on diversity and comics. Subscribe.